in logic, there are a bunch of core equivalence principles, patterns that keep coming up again and again and again. If you learn these now and understand why they work, your understanding of logic, it's going to go from here to here. OK, let's take a look. Hello everyone, welcome back to Attic Philosophy. This is a series of videos introducing the basic concept of logic and this is part two of our videos on equivalence. In this video, we are going to look at equivalence schemes. If you're finding these videos useful, why don't you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get updates. Okay, so what are equivalence schemes? Let's take a look. So when we have two sentences, A and B, they are equivalent just in case A entails B and also B entails A. Logical equivalence means that the truth table for A is exactly the same as the truth table for B. OK, so in every line, if there's a T for A, there's got to be a T for B. And if there's an F for A, there's got to be an F for B. That is most of what we need to know about equivalence. However, there are some equivalences that keep cropping up. OK, some patterns that keep recurring. I think it's a good idea to learn some or all of the equivalences I'm about to show you because they're going to be really useful in what follows. And if you learn them by heart, it means you don't have to keep working them out from scratch. I'm going to show you a big long list of equivalences, first of all involving AND and OR, conjunction and disjunction, then some involving negation, then some involving IF THEN, and then a few involving IF and ONLY IF. OK, so starting with conjunction A and B, that is equivalent to B and A. The conjuncts, the A and the B, can be switched around. It doesn't change the meaning. It doesn't change the truth table of those sentences. Think about why that is. A and B means both, so it doesn't matter whether we do the A or the B first. If they're both true, they're both true in either order. Similarly, A or B, B or A are equivalent because that means at least one of them is true. If at least one of A and B is true, again, the order doesn't matter. Bit more complicated now. A and B or C, well, that's equivalent to A and B and C. A and B and C, if you think about the truth table, it basically means all three of A, B, C are true. So it doesn't matter where we put the brackets in. It doesn't matter whether we work out B and C first and then say also A is true. Or if we work out A and B first and then say also C is true. If all three are true, then all three are true. And similarly, A or B or C. Well, if that's true, at least one of those three is true. So again, it doesn't matter which way we put the brackets in. A or B or C is equivalent to A or B or C. OK, so these are all examples involving just one connective, either AND or it's got an OR in it. OK, so these have an AND in and these have an OR in. What about if we mix up the AND and OR? Something like this, A AND, either B or C. That's equivalent to either a and B or A and C. And similarly, A or B and C, that's equivalent to A or B and A or C. These two are called the commutativity rules. OK, so we say that AND commutes, you can change the order, or commutes, you can change the order. These two are called associativity. AND and OR associates. If you have a big long string of ands or a big long string of ors, it doesn't matter where you put the brackets in. And these two, these are called the distribution rules. So if we start off with something that's got an and as the main connective followed by an or, you can distribute the and over the or and end up with something that is an or followed by an and. And similarly, the other way around, starting with an or and ending up with an and. You can distribute and over or and also you can distribute OR over AND. It's not so obvious why these two are true. It's not so obvious why this is equivalent to this, for instance. But let's think it through. OK, suppose we take the A and the B and the C to mean that Anna's going to go to the party, Beck's going to go to the party, and Kath is going to go to the party. So this means Anna's going to go and also 
either Beck or Kath are going to go. So who's going to go? Well, it's either going to be Anna and Beck going together or it's going to be Anna and Kath going together. And similarly, if it's the case that either Anna goes or both Beck and Kath go together, then it's going to be the case that you're either going to get Anna or Beck and also you're either going to get Anna or Kath. OK, all of these include the cases. So all of these ors include the cases where all three go. So compatible with this is that all three go and compatible with this is that all three go. That's kind of a quick explanation of why the distribution equivalences really are equivalences left to right and right to left. So there are a bunch of equivalences, equivalent schemes, I should say, because we're talking about A and B rather than specific P's, Q's and R's. Here are a bunch of equivalent schemes involving just and and or. What about if we include negation in the mix? Let's have a look. Not A and B. That's equivalent to either not A or not B. So this sentence is equivalent to this sentence. Notice that we've transformed something involving an and into something involving an or. Here, the not is the main connective, but here the or is the main connective. If we looked at the syntax tree on the left, the not would be right up the top of that syntax tree, but we've pushed it down over here on the right. So the syntax tree would have an or at the top, followed by two nots, A and B down the bottom. So here is an interrelation between not and and, and we've got the same pattern with not and or. Not A or B is equivalent to not A, and not B. So we've got a very similar pattern going on here. Compare those two and compare those two. OK, this side is equivalent to this side, but pretty obviously this isn't equivalent to this. One more really important equivalence involving not double negation, not not A is equivalent to A on its own. So a double negation cancels out. Pretty obvious why that's true. We said that the Negation symbol switches the truth value from T to F and F to T. So if you have two negation symbols, not not, it's going to switch the truth value and switch it back again. So not not A will have the same truth value as A on its own. These two together, the top two, are called the De Morgan rules. And the last one is called double negation. You often hear that in the context of double negation elimination. That is an inference from not not A through to A. You've also got double negation introduction from A to not not A. Put them together, you've got an equivalence, a two-way entailment. OK, now let's have a think about material implication. If then, if A, then B. What's that going to be equivalent to? Well, we already said that if A then B should mean the same as you can't have A true and B false. In other words, not A and not B. OK, so I think it's fairly clear that those things should be equivalent. But there's one more equivalence that's going to be really important. And this is this is the one that's harder to get our heads around. If A then B is also equivalent to either not A or B. That one's not so obvious. Now, in fact, if we think to the ones we just did, the De Morgan rules and the double negation elimination rules. If we apply De Morgan to this and then apply double negation elimination, we're going to end up with this. OK, so we've already got a good inkling that these two are equivalent. And if these two are equivalent and these two are equivalent, it's just going to follow that this and this are equivalent. Still, it's always a bit puzzling that this one and this one are equivalent. Why should that be? Let's have a look at the truth table for if A then B and try and work it out. So this is our truth table for if A then B. Let's look at some patterns in it. When A is false, if A then B will always be true. And in the two cases where B is true, if A then B will be true. So either of those cases, a being false or B being true will guarantee that if A then B will be true. So either of those on its own, not A or B, will guarantee that if A then B is true. That's to say that not A or B entails if A then B, but also those two cases together, A being false, B being true, exhaust the three cases in which if A then B is true. 
So in other words, if this is true, then one of those two cases holds. OK, that is to say that this sentence entails this one. They entail either way, so they are equivalent. It's always a bit weird to think that one through, but it's going to be really, really important to remember it, particularly when we look at this kind of case here. OK, when A is false, it automatically follows that if A then B is true. So if we remember that this is equivalent to this, it helps us avoid problems, tricky problems in that case. Final case we're going to look at today, A if and only if B. What is that equivalent to? Well, when we introduced the idea, we said that A if and only if B is like if A then B and also if B then A. OK, so that gives us an equivalent straight off the bat. It's a conjunction of if A then B and if B then A. OK, so we said that that's what A if and only if B should mean. But is it actually going to come out right? Are these things going to have the same truth tables? Let's just quickly run through it in our heads. So the truth table for this, we said A and B should have identical columns. OK, so either A and B are both true or A and B are both false. Let's check that that makes this sentence true. So if A and B are both true, then B's true. So this bit's true and also A's true. So this bit's true. So it's both true. That is to say, this sentence entails this one. But what about going the other way? Does this sentence entail this one? Well, let's try and work out a case where this one's true, but this one's false. That would mean that this doesn't entail this. Let's see if we can do that. If this is going to be false, then A and B have to have different truth values. So let's suppose that's true. A and B have different truth values. Well, there's two ways in which A and B could have different truth values. It might be that A is true and B is false. But in that case, this bit here would be false. So this would be false. Or it might be the case that B is true and A is false. But in that case, this would be false. So the whole thing would be false. In other words, if this is false, this is false. And that amounts to saying that if this is true, then this is true. In other words, this entails this. We've got a two way entailment, so they really are equivalent. There are some other ways of expressing this equivalence. So I just said that A, if and only if B, if we look at the truth table, that's going to mean they have the same columns. In other words, either they're both true or they're both false. So a different way to put that would be it can't be the case that either one is true and the other false or the other way around. It can't be true that one is true and the other is false. These are just pretty much different ways of saying exactly the same thing. If we did some kind of fancy working with the De Morgan laws and double negation elimination, we could see directly that this one and this one are equivalent. But anyway, all three of these are equivalent to each other and to A if and only if B. Kind of you don't really need to remember these two, but it's good to remember that those are equivalent. OK, so there you have equivalent schemes. Now, in the next video, we're going to be looking at how you can take these equivalent schemes and use them to rewrite sentences in interesting ways, in particular, in ways that allow you to take a really complicated, difficult to understand sentence and rewrite it so that it might be easier to understand what it means or easier to work out whether it would be true or false. OK, so I hope you found that video interesting. I hope you're finding this useful. If you are, why don't you subscribe to the channel? It would be great to have you on board. If you've got any questions on this material, leave me a comment below. It's been really interesting engaging with all your comments and feedback. I really enjoy that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.